George Washington would be rolling over in his grave if he knew what President Obama was up to. Right now, the president is preparing to push through what has the potential to be the largest trade deal in human history, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or as it's more commonly known, the TPP. If approved, the TPP would create a whole new set of rules regulating the economies of 12 different countries in four different continents bordering the Pacific Ocean. These rules cover everything from pharmaceuticals to digital copyright law and could permanently change the way everyday Americans and people all over the world interact with the global economy. So you'd think Ob the Obama administration would want to keep the public as up to date as possible on such a massive trade deal, right? Wrong. The United States has negotiated and is negotiating the TPP almost entirely in secret. In fact, most of what we know about it actually comes from leaked documents, and some of those documents paint a very scary picture. According to Public Citizens Trade Watch, TPP would allow private foreign corporations to sue countries that try to pass regulations they don't like, to reward country, companies that send jobs overseas, and to gut regulations that keep big banks in check. That's why the TPP is way more dangerous than normal trade deals like NAFTA, which are pretty damn bad to begin with. As Dean Baker wrote in a recent piece for the Huffington Post, free trade is not what the TPP is all about. The TPP is about crafting rules that will favor big business at the expense of the rest of the population in both the United States and in other countries. So why is the TPP so friendly to big corporations? It's easy. They wrote it. While the Bush and Obama administrations have kept the public in the dark about what's in the TPP, they've let big corporations not only look at draft versions of the treaty, they've even let those corporations make changes to them. In fact, in many cases, the corporations wrote the first drafts in the first place. It shouldn't be any surprise, then, that President Obama doesn't even want Congress to look at the TPP. To push the U.S. into the proposed treaty as soon as possible, he's proposing a special legislative trick called fast-tracking that would prevent lawmakers from making any amendments to the TPP. Instead, this treaty would be sent right to the floor where it would have only a single chance with a simple majority vote up or down. Given what we know about the TPP and what we know about the, how the president wants to push it through Congress without debate or amendment, the stakes couldn't be higher. For over 200 years since the founding of our republic, our economy was built on a system of tariffs, small taxes on importing and imported goods. These tariffs made American goods cheaper in the United States, thus protecting American manufacturing, and made our country a global superpower. American businesses and American workers didn't have to compete with cheap products or cheap labor from abroad, and so our economy flourished. Everything worked just fine until the 1980s, when President Ronald Reagan abandoned the system of tariffs that had worked so well for centuries and ushered in the era of so-called free trade. Every president since including Democrats like Bill Clinton and Republicans like George W. Bush, have followed Reagan's lead, signing us on to free trade deals like NAFTA, CAFTA, SHAFTA, the whole bunch of them. These deals were supposed to grow the economy, but instead they have decimated its industrial base, its most productive source of wealth. As a result, the United States is now what economy in crisis is calling a service or servant economy. In most parts of the country, factory jobs have been replaced by non-union service sector jobs. There's nothing wrong with working in a place like McDonald's or Walmart, but the fact of the matter is that Walmart jobs don't pay nearly as good as union manufacturing jobs do. As Adam Smith pointed out in his 1776 book, The Wealth of Nations, the only way to create real wealth is to make things. Economies are built from the ground up. And when an economy doesn't have a strong base of good-paying manufacturing jobs, it doesn't produce enough wealth to stay healthy. 30 years of tariff busting and so-called free trade have already changed our country's economy for the worse. If President Obama gets his way and pushes the TPP through Congress, it could put the middle class on death watch. There's still a lot we don't know about the TPP, but what we do know are the giveaways to Big Pharma and the bankster class the privileges for job-killing outsources, and that the courts would let corporations fight regulations. All of this would put the final nail in the coffin of the economic system that our founders created. The TPP would complete the transformation of our economy from one that produces wealth to one that bleeds wealth. The only people who would benefit from it would be the same class of people who have benefited from every trade deal 
every anti-tariff bill since the Reagan administration. The banksters, the corporate lawyers, and the CEOs who have spent the last three decades fleecing the American people. In a perfect world, President Obama would reject the TPP outright. We're not in a perfect world. So at the very least, he should let the American people and our Congress see what's inside this treaty. 